distributed teams work. And I always sought, I, I, I always uh, tried to find some sort of methodology or framework that could help to avoid the problems, and I never found it. So that's like the last few years I've been thinking, okay, what in the agile community there is kind of a lack of help in that because most of the frameworks like safe, less, scrum, they do touch upon it. But as somebody before already said, in most cases they say fly your people in and try not to do distributed, but it's not reality. And so I think it's a, a missing part within the agile space. And that's where we're trying to fail here. So I also found out that's not really, it's not a, a straight path. Like it's more like you're juggling balls in the air and every time you try something, the other one falls down and you'll tr have to try something else. You know, it's not, so you kind of have to push the buttons. So our approach defines those balls and also on different levels. And it looks like this. It's not very fancy, but one of my Indian designers actually made it. So I think it shows the message. We defined nine balls or bubbles as we call it. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but culture is there, tools are there, leadership is there, so we've discussed a few of them already. And within each of, the, in, within each of those balls, we've got questions, virtues, and practices. The questions actually help you to analyze where are we at? And what kind of issues are we facing today? The virtues are guidelines or values that can help teams or leadership to define the right behaviors so that the distributed teams or the distributed organization runs more smooth. And then the practices are practical experiences from people like you, because we've already shared a couple of them, that have worked within your context so that other people can actually use it as well. Now what we have in mind is the model and the questions and the virtues, we've defined that. We would still like to get a lot of feedback on that. So if you feel inclined to help us out on this framework, we'd appreciate your feedback after the talk or after the conference. And the practices we want to open source. So we've published our book on JITBOOK, and uh, it's, it's freely available. There's a set of practices available already, but people can actually contribute. So if you have something to share and you can write about it, it would be valuable to us to add that, and we share it with everybody else in the world. So one of the bubbles is culture. We already discussed it, but I think it's always an interesting, and there's always talks about culture. And I actually was surprised by the result because I think what happens is a lot of the communication and collaboration issues are actually caused by the cultural differences. And I think we're not aware of that. It's sort of, it's underneath the surface. And some people explicitly spoke about, about a few cultural differences that influence the collaboration. But in general, I think it's underneath the surface because we think we understand each other, but we actually don't. And that's what causes the communication issues and the collaboration issues. <coughs> so the questions we or some of the questions we defined within the culture ball or bubble. Do we have an us versus them paradigm, which we just discussed? How does each culture perceive hierarchies? And that's also a big thing. Singapore, for example, is a lot more hierarchical than Holland is. If you look at the Hofstede model, I think, I'm not sure about Singapore, but it's probably around 60. And then Holland is about uh, 35, I believe. So there's a huge difference in how we perceive hierarchies. And then how much self-organization do we expect? Agility is all about self-organization, but it's not natural to some cultures, or it's more natural to some cultures and less to another one. Now I'm Dutch, so I might be stereotyping stuff, and I feel like I can just say that. <coughs> Don't feel insulted, it's just my, my own opinion. So the us versus them mentality, which Adrienne also uh, mentioned just now, I think this is a big thing. It's, in a lot of cases, we're not aware of it, but we think we're right, you know, because we're, we're one pack, we're in one country, we're maybe in the head office in Singapore, and then we've got people in India, and we think if a mistake is made, they're wrong. And as soon as that happens, it kind of drives the collaboration apart. You know? So it's something that should be a red flag always, but companies that are not that experienced with distributed agile yet won't recognize it and it, it goes apart. So if that happens, it's like you have to ask your question, okay, is this, is this happening to our distributed teams or not? And if it is, we need to start doing something about it. This guy is also there. I don't know if you have a boss like that in your company, but sometimes they look like this, I believe. <laughs> um, actually quite a funny movie to see. 
So we have, like, we have a lot of bosses who are attached to status, who like to give orders, yeah. who have an ego, ego, that, ego that needs to be fat. And if we look at agile, then this is something we actually don't want. 